Welcome back to my channel. My name is Shamin Miller. If you have never been here before because you happen to fall into this video because of my testimony, welcome. Um, I normally or lately have been making videos the last couple of years about fasting uh, and about health and living a happy life. And I've done some travel vlogs years and years ago as well. Um, but now today, this video is actually my testimony of how I became Christian a month ago. And um, uh, it was something that was very, very powerful to me because I have been searching and searching and searching and searching for um, like my purpose, my purpose and that emptiness, trying to fill that emptiness on my heart that I've had for such a long time, despite having actually what appears to most people to have a really good life. Um, but uh, it's something that I needed to share with you. So if you haven't been here before, welcome. And um, thanks to everyone coming back here today. I know this is not a regular video that I make for you, but um, because this is a big part of my life and I share so many things about myself with you, either here or on Instagram, um, I found found that it was really important for me to share this as well and just share um, how Jesus and how God has changed my life. And um, before you turn it off, just give me a chance to at least explain myself so that you understand like where I was coming from because I have been a person that has pretty much been anti-religion for a very, very long time. I've had not the nicest thoughts about people who are part of religion because of the things that I was learning over the years. Um, but now, you know, putting my pride aside and, you know, really just out there searching for the truth. Um, I have found it. I know it. I have I've experienced Jesus and, um, but I, before, you know, but I want to put this in a way for you guys so that you can understand it because there are people here that don't know Jesus at all. And then I know that there are people that are here that have know him or haven't experienced him. And, um, I am hoping that my testimony to you can help, um, further your, um, uh, to help deepen your relationship with him and, um, with your faith, in him. So I hoping that you guys enjoy this video, but um, I'm, I'm just going to start here. I'm actually going to give you a background of my life and then what has been happening. But really, or honestly, over the last three, four months is when things really started to make a really big impact on me. But um, uh, without further ado, I'm going to get into this. So this video is going to take a while. So sit back, relax, or go for a walk or something, whatever you like. Um, and I just, I hope that you enjoyed this video. So I've got my notes in front of me here to make sure that I don't go too off track because as many people know, I like to talk a lot, but uh, yeah, so we're going to get into this. So I'm going to tell you that I wish that somebody would have told me the statement that I'm going to tell you now in hopes, let's see here, so that in hopes I would have considered looking into Jesus Christ and Christianity sooner. What I'm going to say to you guys is actually going to ruffle some feathers, okay, but bear with me. Because when you are searching about the truth, it's not about you. It wasn't about me. It's not about your family. And it's not about the people you look up to. It's about really keeping an open heart and an open mind, even if it might destroy everything that you might have known, because many things got destroyed in my life and broken down along my path as I moved along. And I like being shocked so that um, just so that I can understand, like, what's the worst of something or the best of something. And um, so this may or may not shock you, depending on your beliefs. But let me just tell you here. So here it is. The only way to get into heaven is through believing that Jesus Christ is our Lord and Savior. And the only way to get to heaven is believing in him. If you don't believe in him, you will go to hell when you die. Yeah, it's pretty harsh, okay? It's pretty, pretty harsh. Um, but if you've believed this all of your life, then you're like, yeah, okay, Shamin, yeah, I get it. But if, like me, I did not know this stuff. I did not know about Jesus when I was younger. Really didn't know about Jesus until a few, a few months ago. And um, if somebody, so depending on the point of my life, I may have reacted to these things very, very differently. So as a child, I believed in heaven and hell. 
but mainly focused on heaven because I was young and that's what my parents taught me. Um, but because my parents were Muslim at the time, uh, they may not have let that belief fly. And interestingly enough, though, my dad was Christian as a young boy. I think he was part of the Roman Catholic Church, but it's something that he doesn't like to talk to me about. And he was an altar boy. But um, I, you know, I haven't actually told my dad that I have converted to Christianity yet. So I'm probably going to have to have that phone call with him today. If I was a teenager, okay, so if when I was a teenager, if this information had came from uh, come from a friend or a friend's parent that I really respected, I probably would have considered it more because when you're a teenager, at least for me, I always wanted to like I wanted to be able to fit in, get along with others. And, um, you know, like I love my parents, but my parents divorced when I was 14 years old. And so I didn't have like the closest, closest relationship with them. And we could never really tell them what was happening. So like I acted out, but secretly. So they didn't know the bad things that I was doing when I was younger. But most when I say my bad things, really, honestly, I didn't do like a lot of my bad things like drugs and lots of sex and partying when I was until in my 20s. But I was still responsible. I was responsible, you know, because I still got I went to school. I had many jobs. Um, I got good grades, but I had this other side of me that was so rebellious. But my parents didn't know about it at that time. So as a teenager, definitely I things that for me, like I if I had that figure of, you know, a supportive friend or supportive family that would have shared that with me, then that would have been amazing. And it's just funny, though. I actually went to a Catholic high school when I was a teenager, but never um, but I don't remember learning that or maybe I was so oblivious to it or maybe nobody said it straight out to me. But I think if somebody told me straight out, I would have been like, oh, I'm like, OK, OK, that's something to think about, you know. But this keep in mind, though, too, guys, this is like before the days of YouTube and like Facebook and stuff like, you know, I was born in 1983. So like that stuff like Internet was existing, but YouTube was not a big thing yet at that time at all. Like, I don't think even YouTube existed then. Um, so in my adult years, so my 20s to my early 30s. OK, so I'm 36. I'll be 37 actually in the, in the next few weeks. But in my adult years, if I were to hear that, I probably would have dismissed you. Um, and the reason why is because my life at the time was focused on like that dream um, where and that or maybe societal's the societal norms of how you should be living your life at that time, which is definitely getting blasted now throughout the years with more millennials and stuff. But, you know, going to university getting a good education, getting a well-paying job, and having a family. Obviously, I did not go the family route, but I was doing the education, working, was able to afford my own place, went out partying, hung out with my friends, traveled. And so um, so that was good, you know, but I probably at that time would not have thought about it. And then in my adult years from about 33 up until um, a month ago, um, I was in, I started in the new age movement and uh, I'll explain more about that after. But I would have said that, no, this isn't true. There's life after death. And meaning that after, sorry, when I say life after death, sorry, I meant that I believed until literally a month ago that we had the ability to reincarnate. So like hell was just not, it's never actually discussed in the new age, interestingly enough. Um, and so I never thought about hell as an option. And I just thought I was living this good, good life and I was a good person, but not really knowing that we actually are all sinners just based on the true nature of humanity. But I digress. So, um, yeah, so during okay, so during quarantine, I promise I'll give you more on history, okay, guys. But I got to tell you, so but during the quarantine time, okay, I started going down the path of conspiracy theories, and using channeled informations to give information to give me more clarity about life. And I got information from medical medium about like health and wellness. I was listening to this guy, Feel Good. He's gone off the deep end right now. Um, Teal Swan, Magenti Pixie, Elizabeth April, and more. And there were two things that happened during this time. One was knowingly and the other one was unknowingly. And these both things happening actually would start a ticking time bomb that was going to go off shortly thereafter for me to be saved by Jesus Christ. It's absolutely beautiful. OK, so number one, I had a follower um, say to me, 
in my Instagram. Um, I don't know if he watches my YouTube, but or he or she, I think it's a he, but um, he literally said after I made this post. It's a really good documentary I watched on the weekend called Out of the Shadows. Um, and if you're interested in finding out more stuff, you know, you can check out a channel called Fall Cabal. LOL, all this stuff is gonna lead you back to religion, winky face. Rabbit hole goes deep. That comment sat with me and it was really, really strong. Okay, it just sat with me and I was like, okay, I'm like, I'm, I, for some, it was just really interesting and I like just left it at that, but it was, it, got, it was planted. The seed was planted then in my mind. Second one, unknowingly, unknowingly at the time when I started talking about all this, the stuff that I had mentioned to you earlier, um, while I was speaking about the works from people with channeled, and they were the channeled, they were channeling spiritual entities, my followers, God bless them, they started praying for me. So. Now I'm going to get into my history. So I was born in Cape Town, South Africa. My family, most of the family back there is Muslim. Um, I don't even know if I have any Christian relatives. Like I said, my dad was Christian when he was younger, but then he stopped following that. And then he converted to Islam for my mom. And then now he just calls himself more spiritual. And so then uh, my family, we moved to Canada when I was five years old. And when we got there, um, they sent us to Madrasa, which is like the Muslim school for kids to go to, to learn how to pray, how to speak Arabic. Um, my parents did not practice it at the time when we came to Canada. So the ki- us and the kids, like we all hated going to the school. It was just something we did not want to do. It, we eventually, you know, having five children against you parents, we won. Um, so um, so yeah, so we stopped practicing, but I still like at nighttime before I went to bed, I would say my prayers. I would say the Surah Fatiha and probably some other ones, but I don't, I don't know the names of them, but I would say it because I was just, um, but her parents taught us to, to say it every single night, but I had no idea what it meant at the time. Okay. We just did it because it was, uh, repetition. It was, uh, it was part of the routine. Then my parents divorced when I was 14 years old. That's always a good time for people to divorce. But um, at that time, as I said, I went to a Catholic high school, but I still had no interest in Christianity. And I'll be honest with you, I'm not, I really don't know why. Actually, I had no, yeah, I didn't really care about going to the Catholic school per se, like for the religion purposes of it. I honestly just went to the school because I had a better curriculum and they, um, from what I heard and that also um, that also that I could wear a uniform every single day so I didn't have to worry about what clothes I was wearing and like my family like we never had much money at all and so you know having to go to school and wear like um, like getting new clothes and stuff all the time like it was something that we couldn't really afford and like I was always just very um, I was always self-conscious when I was younger about like even the uh, the cars that my mom would drive us to school in because other people had nicer cars and people had nicer clothes and you know not like anybody would make fun of me like like thank goodness but I was but you know I was from a different country when I was younger and then I wasn't like a popular person and so you know you get self-conscious and you see all these stuff in magazines of all like just everything so it really just messes it just messes with your mind when you are younger and so anyways to be honest with you, when I was at the Catholic school, um, I don't remember anything about religion. Um, well, I just I remember the things like the practices, but uh, we had to go to the Catholic church and it was literally like the most boring thing ever. And I did never enjoyed it at all. But it was just funny because I remember so many, <laughs> many things about it now that I'm doing more education about Christianity and Catholicism as well. But um, I don't know if I mentioned it to you, but I did join a Protestant church. OK. And so, um, so I, yeah, so I am Protestant. Um, so during the time in my teenagers, my dad actually, uh, brought me to a Jehovah's Witness church because he was dating this Russian woman. Um, but it never resonated with me either at that time. And plus I did not like her, you know, and, um, but I do remember though, I do remember one day that going to the church, there was a guy that, um, I went to high school with and he actually got baptized and he was probably about 17 years old or 
or something. And for me, it was such a memorable moment in my life because it was the first time for me seeing an adult being baptized. And when I go into the Catholic church, you know, you, you only, you knew, or you knew that in school that like, oh, um, kids get baptized when they're babies, you know? So I never knew that, oh, adults get baptized. I was like, oh, that was pretty interesting. But again, I never looked into the other, um, other different types of Christianity because at the time, you know, we just had books. <laughs> we didn't, you know, we had like some internet, you know, but I, it's not something that I use much at the time um, in those years. So this is like early 90s. Okay, guys. So, um, so for me, very, very, um, very memorable experience, something that stuck with me deep in my subconscious. So, the first new age thing though interestingly enough was actually some i did some hypnosis in high school so they had like this guy come and um he got a bunch of people from the audience and i was one of them and he was able to hypnotize everyone except me and so instead of me going back to go sit into the bleachers you know because i was so self-conscious about like what people thought about me i like faked being hypnotized just so that i like would fit in with everyone but i gotta tell you that i am like like God bless, like God, for not me not being hypnotized because it was just, I was just crazy. I just feel that like um, Jesus has been like in my life and so many like throughout the entire time, but I just wasn't aware of His existence and Him looking out for me. So it was just, it was just an interesting thing that um, I thought about when I had put together the script for you guys. So yeah, so in my, so now okay, out of my teens, now into my twenties and my early thirties, I was like kind of atheist you know like I'm like I think I like I knew the existence of God but I never really accepted it and I maybe just was just didn't care about religion whatsoever and I wanted nothing to do with it so for me it was just it was not a part of my life at all God was not a part of my life and so um, I attended something uh, that my friend recommended me to it was called Landmark Forum I got to tell you, it was a waste of my time and a waste of my money. And I felt like it was so fake. But at the same time, I wasn't ready for it. I just went to it because I'm like, oh, it's supposed to help me. OK, but I was just I was just somewhere. Honestly, I felt like I wasn't like a whole nother planet altogether. OK, but at that time in my 20s, in my early 30s, guys, I lived a pretty sinful, sinful life, you know, and because I never really knew that about the severity of sin, you know, and I never thought that I was a sinner and I always thought I was a good person. You know, I slept around, um, I wasted, um, you know, I slept around, sorry. I cheated on my boyfriends. I lied a lot. I would do drugs. Um, I would get drunk every single week and I was smoking cigarettes. But as I told you, I was actually a good student and I was a good worker because I was taught the value of working hard. And so that's something that I never, you know, I didn't, not want to do is something like I had a high standard for myself because that's what my parents instilled in us. And so, you know, I, I'm doing all these stuff on the side, but I never, um, but you know, so I was doing all these things on the side and like, they never knew, like my friends knew and they were like, they're cool with me, you know? And, but, um, yeah, so I never really, like, I knew that what I was doing was kind of bad, but I never put it on the level of like sin as how like, you know, God puts it. And when you read about it in the Bible, but yeah. So at the age of 27 though, is when I started asking those deep existential questions in your life that people who are start searching for themselves will ask, who am I? Why am I here? And what's my purpose? And it's funny. I asked those questions while I was living with an ex-boyfriend. That relationship was just, <laughs> it was another relationship, but we lived together. I just smoked weed. And I was sitting there on the floor and then I was just like, is this is what life is supposed to be right now? So just think of me. I'm already like I'm so disconnected from God. God is not, does not have a um, place in my life. I'm just smoking weed almost nightly. I'm working at a job that I hated, um, you know, working all these hours and doing what I thought was like the life, you know, what people should be doing and like kind of this dream of like the, the societal expectations of you. So yeah, so anyways, after this time, like this, it was a big moment for me, you know, I actually wrote those words down, I wrote it in a letter, 
And then I am after that, I broke up with that dude. And then I actually dated a really, really great guy for four years. You know, he was amazing. And um, we actually had a really good relationship. And he was like the first boyfriend that actually encouraged me to take a trip on my own. And, um, you know, so it was my, I actually went to Bali and I did a yoga and surf retreat. And that was my first introduction to meditation, funnily enough. And um, meditation, when you meditate and just trying to clear your mind, that's a new age practice as well, which again, I'll tell you a bit about after. And so, um, so yeah, so we had this really great relationship. Okay. But then, um, four years later, I ended up breaking up with him because I, I cheated on him again, um, because I met this, um, I met this Portuguese guy. It was like, kind of like, instant like lust attraction like just our eyes met and we we're just like that was it and then yeah that was a it was a tumultuous summer and but after that after everything really i was so lonely after the breakup and when me and that guy were like if he was the dude was like he's a nice guy you know but like he had a girlfriend in portugal okay and he was living in america and he would come to canada because he was a consultant and um you know when we get together it was really great but then when he was gone like he was just like never like he could never make a commitment or anything and so then for me that was that was god challenging me to be like okay she mean like you gotta stop this crap but um eventually anyways during that time I was really lonely, like really, really lonely um, at that time. And especially, it was just crazy because in my, in my life at that time, I was making just over $100,000 a year. Um, I had an amazing, amazing group of girlfriends and still girlfriends that I have today. I was living with my brother, so my rent was really cheap. I had no debt. And um, I was going out. Uh, I was able to go out for restaurants, do different things, living in Toronto. And to live in Toronto, like, you know, making $100,000 at least and like not having any debt or anything like that is great because it's expensive living in that city. So I was able to do the stuff that I wanted. And um, so during this time, uh, I decided to, um, I decided to get like some past life regression therapy because my brother that I was living with, he had told me that, um, he, that this would help me because one of my things that I was trying to figure out is my uh, reasons for my repeated behavior of like dating someone, being in a really super intense and super connected relationship, and then re- losing interest near the end, cheating on them, and then moving into another relationship, and then literally repeating that cycle. And I re- repeated that cycle for, I don't know, 13, 14 years of my life. Um, I made a video about cheating as well. Um, I can't remember if I took that video down or not, but you can go look back at my channel if you want to watch it. But that's pretty much in a nutshell what was happening in my relationships from my 20s until my early 30s so then I she was like oh instead of doing the past love regression therapy first we'll do some neuro-linguistic programming so we did that it was fine you know we did one session but then um during that time one of my friends gave me the book the untethered soul by Michael Singer and then so that's when I started learning more about like living in the present and don't judge myself and others and um not identifying with my thoughts and emptying my mind and living from my heart. So all of these things seem very, very innocent. And in the self-help category, they do seem innocent because you really want to be able to help yourself. But just wait, I'll tell you guys a little bit about this after. So anyways, these are some more practices. Um, so anyway, so once I started practicing these um, things from the untethered soul, and the biggest thing for me was to stop my thoughts from happening and just like letting them go. And so when you stop judging yourself and you stop talking to yourself all the time and you just kind of live like quietly, like just super zen, you, um, you know, and especially when you have, if you've had an overactive mind for a very long time, and I would talk to myself so much all the time, then, uh, then yeah, it's definitely was a lot more relaxing and I was able to get my confidence back and I just realized I'm like, no, I'm like, I need to be happy. I'm like, if I'm not happy with myself, you know, I'm like, how am I ever going to expect um, I, I, how can I ever expect um, to put that responsibility on a man in a relationship if I couldn't even be good with myself, you know? So it's it's kind of interesting, though, when you think about it, because I had like this seemingly good life, you know, all this money, good job, good friends, you know, living in a good location, safety, um, beautiful, you know, I'm not trying to like toot my own horn, you know, but um, you know, like things were good and what people would think like, oh, you have it all, but you know, we, when really when you like really kind of get deep down to it you know not everyone has it all and you don't really know what's happening in this head you know the head and the heart so let's see 
Let's go. Okay. So, anyway, so after the that one, after reading the book, uh, I went back to the therapist and I'm like, I don't need the NLP anymore. I'm like, this is what I've learned. I'm like, let me do the past life regression therapy. So she had done a few sessions with me. We recorded it. I'll be honest with you, it felt extremely, extremely real and going through those sessions. Um, uh, but anyways, I thought so things because things were going really, really good. Okay, at this time after, you know, I was living in the present. And then I met this Italian guy for a while. Oh my goodness. But anyways, I thought that during my life, during this time, I had found like the golden egg and everything was great. I'm like, oh, I'm like, finally. I was like, I find like the meaning of life. And I'm like, now I know how to really be happy and I feel really good. So during this time, you know, I was doing this, like living this lifestyle for the last, for the few years. But after I had had this revelation, you know, and I was just like, oh, I'll just let things go. Just really feel and live in the moment. I like met this Italian guy and he was really rich. OK, um, he was he was rich. He like flew me around to, all over the world and never had to pay for anything. He bought me clothes and, you know, we had it was great. We had a good sex life for the first like few months and then he kind of just became weird. But um, I was pretty passive in that relationship because um, the thing is, too, is that uh, I became more passive because I the I loved Like, I loved him. Obviously, he was great, but I really loved the fact that he had money and I'd never, like, been in a relationship with someone who had so much, like, money. Like, I actually, like, a lot of it, you know? And so um, it's it's not a good reason to love someone, okay? It's really, really not. And, um, you know, but I... And he was, like, very set in his ways and you know if you meet certain Italian people or just Italian people in general, some of them, they're very, very strong in their um, convictions and what they believe. And so anyways, I just thought that, you know, I'll just let it go and I'll trust the universe and then it'll be okay, you know. But then little did I know at that time that it was just like the devil putting another obstacle in my way um, with me like being so then hyper focused on money at that time. So like focusing on these worldly things instead of, you know, me trying trying me to get closer to God. So anyways, during this time... I was then introduced to astral astral projection, which is out-of-body experiences by my brother, because he had asked me a question. He's like, how can you know about, how could you um, know about life if you don't think about death? And I was like, yeah, that's a pretty interesting question, because I'd never really thought about death ever before, you know, and the only things I told you before when I was younger, my parents talked about heaven, kind of knew about hell, but then I kind of forgot about all that stuff, like, you know, for a while. And so anyways, I decided, my brother told me to read this book, Adventures in the Afterlife by William Buhlman. Please don't read it. Um, but he, um, that's when I prescribed into the belief of reincarnate, reincarnation and forgot about heaven and hell at that time. Okay. So I really got into astral projection and I was really, really, really trying to get out of my body, but I was never able to get out of my body. Actually, thank God for that, actually. And, um, but yeah, I tried many, many times over the years. I had started, I had stopped and I was just really, I just wasn't able to, but um, not too long after that time, I eventually quit my job. So I quit my job at the age of 34 and because I just wasn't happy with what I was doing in my life anymore. And I just, um, yeah, I was, I was just done. I was like, I was done. And so anyways, uh, I went to Southeast Asia and I did a 10 day Vipassana meditation retreat retreat followed by backpacking around Southeast Asia. So if you don't know what Vipassana is, is you do 10 days in silence um, somewhere in the world and it's free for you to go to and uh, they teach you the technique of Vipassana, which is really just, again, clearing out your mind, focusing on the movements or focusing on the different subtle movements that happen within your body. But they teach you a meditation technique over the 10 days that you can take with you after. And they recommend that when you are finished Vipassana that you need to hour, uh, sorry, meditate an hour in the morning and an hour at night. I did that. I That lasted like a week. And then after it was really hard because when you're staying in hostels with so many people, it's not easy to live a meditation lifestyle when you're going out partying and drinking many nights as well. So I um So, yeah, so that's that's what happened there. And so uh, after so I so just before I actually went to Southeast Asia, um, I had met Peter and I'd actually met Peter when I was with the Italian guy. But that was like kind of near the end of our relationship. But Peter became a really good friend first um, to me. Um, I knew that Peter really loved me, you know, but I was not ready for him at all. And I was like, yeah, I'm like, I'm in a relationship here as well. But we got along really well. And um, anyways, Peter has been around for a very long time. Okay. 
a very long time. He's been around for a while, but he's always been super supportive of me no matter what. Now, in 2019, okay, in 2019, let's see here. Ah, I forgot to actually mention, guys, before this, when I actually like, um, when I uh, came across like the untethered soul and all that stuff, that was actually like my first awakening. Like I'll call it my first awakening to like at least being aware that, you know, there's, I was more than my mind, you know, and like I'm more than my thoughts and stuff. But anyways, just to let you know, because I need to get that part of it out. But in 2019, so last year, I started meditating daily because I felt extremely lost. So despite, okay, guys, despite I was successful on my YouTube channel, you know, I'd gone from like a thousand subscribers to like 20,000 subscribers over one summer because of this, this fasting stuff that I was doing. And my channel was good. I was posting videos every single week. Um, I had a really great body despite still having body image insecurity issues, believe it or not. Uh, having a supportive network of friends around me. Uh, I was living in Florida at the time and then I moved to Spain. And um, honestly, not really having much responsibility. Like I'm so grateful that Peter works for us. And so I take care of our home and I take care of him. And um, and so anyways, uh, I did, honestly didn't really have like, um, like there wasn't like, I didn't really have any stress really in my life and I was doing some work but I wasn't really happy with it but honestly I was feeling really 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 lost and then I was losing interest in my YouTube channel and fasting and I didn't know what to do okay I didn't know what to do then then I started learning about law of attraction because I'd never watched the secret yet so I watched was learning about law of attraction and then I signed up for a mindfulness course because I thought that's what I wanted to do and I subsequently dropped out but I wasted four hundred dollars us on that um, I did ayahuasca last summer and my intention for that was to try and connect to my higher self and then not too long after doing ayahuasca I started smoking hash and then I was meditating when I smoked hash and then I connected to my higher self and and then um, it was crazy because in September of last year, Peter actually had to go back to the U.S. to go and deal with some visa immigration issues here for Spain. And so I was here alone by myself and I didn't have many friends in the city as well. So this it was just crazy. Like this went on for like months and months and months, like feeling kind of this lost, even though I was doing stuff. I started going to Spanish classes every day, you know, which was good. But I was still like just so unsure of what I was doing, you know, then um, so fast forward now to the beginning of 2020, I started doing this rolling 48s where I was doing alternate day fasting and that went really well. You guys really, really enjoyed those videos and you enjoyed watching that. And I created this group on Facebook and then I did that for two months. And then after that, I was like, okay, I'm like, I'm done. Cause I just, I wasn't enjoying it anymore. And then the C virus started now, now this comes down into my second awakening and of planting of the seed. Okay. So after the rolling 48s in January and February, I told you guys I came across medical medium, medical medium. Um, I switched to whole foods plant based really, really quickly because I felt that it was something about it because the information was coming from the spirit realm and they didn't have any, um, I was like, no, I, what is it? They didn't have any biases. They didn't have any biases. They didn't have any biases. And uh, compared to what humans would when they share stuff on the internet and when they do their research. And so even though, even though I've watched many, many, many videos, guys, about how many vegans, you know, there's a lot of vegans that eventually start eating meat and f fish and eggs again because their health suffered so significantly, so significantly and considerably. I decided to still try because I was getting the information from a spirit and I was really, I was like so, so now like really just wanting to find more answers through the new age, okay? I got into the conspiracy theory stuff um, and then I had started watching spiritual teachers who had a connection with spiritual entities. So these spiritual teachers like Teal Swan, Magenta Pixie, Feel Good, Elizabeth April, those are the main ones that I watch. I started watching and learning a little bit the channeled works of Raw. I was learning about 3D to 5D Ascension. Then I'm learning about the aliens and the reptilians and there's the, honestly, oh, and the deep state and everything. I was learning about all this stuff, okay? It was pretty, pretty crazy. I then, um, what else was I doing at this time? 
So I had told you guys that I'd quit the snake diet and then I was talking about celery juice at the time as well in my videos. And then, um, as I'd mentioned, I got, so during that time I got that one Instagram message from that one amazing follower. And then I got a bunch of comments on YouTube as well, saying some things, which I'll tell you about really shortly. Um, and I got a bunch of comments about this and so I kind of just left it and I didn't think anything of it, but I remember the comments I got at this time. Okay. During these last few months before I, I being saved, I was doing two hours of meditation a day. Okay, guys, I started experiencing kundalini energies awakening within my body, but especially first in my head, um, I decided to get a deck of tarot cards. I slept with them under my pillow for a week to help connect with them more spiritually. I was sun gazing literally at the brightest times of the day because I was trying to now open my third eye right? And decalcify my pineal gland by also doing detoxing and stopping drinking water that has fluoride in it and using anything with fluoride and all this stuff. I was reading then books about star seeds because I, for some reason, then I thought I was a star seed and I wanted to connect to my star seed family. And then, um, as I said, I was doing detoxing because I wanted to raise my consciousness and make my physical body lighter so that I have a more of a chance to be able to connect with the spiritual realm. Then, then, despite the perceived perfection that I had, guys, I was detoxing, meditating, living in the present, reciting affirmations every day, started reading the autobiography of a yogi after the surrender experiment. And for me, it was just a way to figure out how to make more money, to be honest with you. I felt empty. I felt empty. So even though like, you know, I don't have to work. I had all of these, I was doing all of these practices, you know, and I was very calm and living in the present. My heart really was empty. Like I was just waiting and waiting and searching and searching and nothing was happening. And I was just like, what? I'm like, and then you're just, and I just kept on wondering, I'm like, well, when's this going to be? I'm like, how long do I have to wait? But I was like, okay, I'm like, I'll be patient. I'll be patient, you know, but I was still like searching for the truth, guys. Then in these moments on June 10th, on June 10th of 2020, this is when Christ had come into my life. His presence was known. So my uh, my sister-in-law, she uh, sent me a text message, and I'm going to read it to you guys. I'm going to put it on the screen here as well. And uh, I am I going to tell you, I love her so much. I'm so grateful that she did this for me. Um, but I'll, I'll tell you, I thought she's a little crazy first. So this is what she said. Her name is Julie. She's like, Shameen, I hope you are doing well. I have to apologize to you for sharing videos on the alien stuff and Dolores Cannon, etc. Whatever else I sent on the New Age, it's all demonic. Please don't get deceived like I did. You might think I'm crazy now or maybe not, but I have to say sorry and don't believe or fall for that crap. It may have intrigued you as I may have had influence. I'm sorry. And I take it back and saying it's all deception. It's all demonic. So she tells me this and I'm like reading this and Peter's in the room. I'm like, babe, I think Julie's gone off the deep end. I don't know what's going on here. I was like, this, this doesn't make sense. This doesn't make sense. She continues to write then. Also, Phil Good, Magenta Pixie and that other chick who has ill encounters is all demonic. They have no clue, but they have opened themselves up to demons thinking they're light beings, but they are not. I unfilled Phil, and just before I did about a month ago, I noticed how he's changing and becoming Merlin. Poor guy is being possessed by a demon. You go and go check out some of his stuff there. He's kind of a little weirded out now. That chick you like too with the desert background? Don't fall for that S-H-I-T either. Or magenta. Anyone who talks to spirits is effed, and it's all demonic. Made me think of the medical medium him too. He is effed. <laughs> so, and I write her back. I'm like, interesting. I never, me, okay, this is me, Shameen, on my high horse with my ego and my pride and my chest puffed out, okay? I say, interesting. I never thought of that. I don't get bi- bad vibes from them, though. I really ne- resonate with a lot of their messages, but at the same time, I don't depend my life on it. I focus on where life wants to take me, and I follow my heart. She writes, Satan is clever, and he infiltrates us humans big time. All Eastern religions, Buddhism, Hinduism, Hinduism, etc., is all pagan. Polytheism is all false gods, and it's Satan's creation. Ooh, dudes, you can just imagine when I heard this. I was just like, I was, I couldn't believe it. I just thought she was nuts, okay? Because 
Julie has been, we'd been sending videos back and forth for months about these things, about like the new age stuff and about conspiracy theory stuff. And she was really getting into it. And I had to back off for a little bit because I was, uh, it was getting a little too heavy for me. And so when she sent this, I honestly, I thought she was really crazy. But it was just interesting, though, that, you know, th- through how how God had made this is that a few weeks before I read The Surrender Experiment by Michael Singer again. Please don't read that book. But um, I read that book again. And um, for me, it, because that's something that was helped me at that time, he was all about surrendering to the universe and surrendering to God. And he was using the word God, not as in God, God. It was more like as in God and the universe, kind of God as he kind of said the creator, but like not as God related to Jesus Christ and as Christianity would refer to God as, but like really the ultimate supreme so- sovereign being. But like, it's not like God. Um, it wasn't Christianity God. Okay. I'll tell you this. It was not the God that they talk about in Christianity. And so, um, so I decided to live how Michael Singer was because, you know, this guy decided to do all this meditation. He surrendered to what life was being, bringing in his way. And when he felt that his ego was telling him, no, 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 don't do something, then he would say, okay, no, I'm going to surrender it. I'm going to surrender to God and just follow my path. And I actually also really liked his book because the dude is like a millionaire, you know, like a millionaire. And um, I, for me, I was like still so focused on wanting to make money like that and so I was like okay fine I'm like I will surrender to the universe I'll surrender to God you know but then at that point I started actually using the word God okay because I never honestly using the word God for many 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 years was very uncomfortable for me to say it like I would actually say his name like I would blaspheme his name I would say OMG which you know I stopped doing that but um, I would never actually say the word um, use his name God to pray to God and so, um, so it was just interesting. So during the, so when she had sent me this message, she was like, oh, I'm going to send you a video. And I was like, no, Julie, please don't send me a video. I don't want to watch this stuff yet. I'm like, I'll watch it when I'm ready. I'm in the middle of a detox right now. And I'm just, you know, I'm just doing my thing right now. So I don't want, <laughs> I was like, just leave me alone. But then, uh, <laughs> she, what she did be, that night before I went to bed, she sent me the video. I saw, I was like, okay. So I marked it as unread and I went to bed. Then I woke up the next day. And uh, this was on June, I think, 11th. And so I woke up the next day and she uh, I was like, you know what? I was like, like, clearly, I was like, there's something in me telling me not to do. I was like, me, I'm like repelling against the saying, no, no, no. So I'm like, you know, I'm like, since I decided to surrender to God and to surrender to the universe, I w- I'm going to surrender and I'm going to watch this video. So I go sit outside on my terrace and I was drinking my watermelon juice because I was doing my detox still at the time. And so I watched um, a video about, it's called New Age Deception, my journey from the new age to Jesus Christ. And so I watched a lot of, so actually I watched the first video. I watched the first video. And after I watched, I was 25 minutes of this girl's experience about how she was deep into the new age and how she found Jesus Christ. And the thing she had talked about was, the new age, um, like it's stem, it's all the practices that are stems from satanic practices, the the spirits that you channel or that you speak with, even though you think that these spirits are positive and they're nice and they're loving on the surface, they are demonic in nature. And um, she had experiences how her spirit showed his true colors and tortured her, okay? And eventually she found Christ and Jesus Christ was the one that helped her to um, let go of those demons or have the demons, like they rebuked the demons, you know, the demons were gone. And um, so I just thought, I so I'm watching this video and at the end of it, I just sat there and I was like, hey, I'm like this is really interesting. Uh, like I was just, well, I don't know if I was really interesting. I'll just say that when I watched it, I wasn't utterly repulsed buy it and I um I just kind of sat there and I'm like hmm I'm like it's pretty interesting like I like my my ego wasn't shooting up or anything I was like okay I'm like that's weird so I decided then to watch a lot more videos that day to see like you know see okay are there more consistencies what do other people say about their testimony videos 
And so I watched a lot of those videos that day, okay? And um, so my moment now with Jesus. So that night, I, um, me and Peter had just finished watching something on Netflix and he was sitting in this living room here. Sorry, he was sitting in this living room here and uh, he was playing his guitar and I was like, babe, I'm going to go lay down in bed. And at that time, um, I was smoke. I started smoking weed every day. It's funny. I started smoking weed during the detox. I was smoking weed every night before going to bed because it was helping me to sleep. Um, and so I smoked a bowl and, uh, I decided to watch, Stephen Bankars' uh, testimony video. And if you don't know who Stephen Bankars is, um, he was someone that was so, so deep in the new age. He was one of the most successful writers on um, on new age theosophy. And um, he made a ton of money on it. And this guy, um, yeah, so he ended up finding Christ. So I watched his testimony video. It was so short. It was only 12 minutes. I love him. I'm so grateful. And um, so I'd smoke the weed and I just listened to his video. And there was something so simple that he had said in this video. He just said, Jesus is the Lord. It's simple. Jesus is the way. And I don't know what had happened, but in that moment, I just had this like wave of emotion that came over me, like this energy all around me. And just all of a sudden, just everything made sense. Like my heart in that moment just felt like I felt full of love. Like I had so much love and so much fullness in my heart at that time. And it was crying. I started crying. Peter didn't know I was crying at the time. I was crying. And it was the first time I ever realized that all of the sin that I was creating in my life and following things that the Lord had told has told us in the Bible that I didn't know anything about the Bible, but telling us in the Bible, don't do these things. And these are the, like these are sins. These are sins. And if you do these things, you can go to hell. And so In that moment, like I had, I just, this, I was just laying there and I was not high anymore. Okay. I was high for that moment when I started the video and all of a sudden it was gone. It was gone. And I don't know what it is. It was just like this. It's like, I just had this knowing right away that like Jesus is, Jesus is our Lord and savior. Like he came onto earth. He, it was God like his he brought his son jesus his only son on earth but jesus was also man and fully god at the same time and he brought his son onto the planet he lived a sinless life he shared the gospel with everyone who he could and he ended up um uh he sacrificed himself he had to sacrifice himself for our sins and he died on the cross And three days later, he was resurrected. And so he died for our sins so that we had an opportunity. We have an opportunity to be with our father. I mean, with God in heaven. And I never understood this story. I never realized that like, I didn't know that God is real. God is real. God created everything everything god has his hand in everything the devil is real the devil is not god though but the devil was created by god but the devil stepped out on god and decided to go his own way okay and so our planet you may not believe this or not but if you read more stuff about it and watch more videos about it our planet is run by the devil Okay, everything is run by the devil. And it all started when Eve took the apple. She listened to the snake. That was the devil. She listened to the snake and then Adam ate it and they instantly severed their connection with God. And God throughout time has been trying to um, reconnect with us, reconnect with us humans throughout time. But because of our sinful nature, because we are humans and we sin, okay, we are not these all good beings okay we're not these good beings we're actually all sinners the payment for sin is death okay the payment of sin is death and so the only way that that covenant could be filled 
was by sending his only son to live a sinless life and to die on the cross and sacrifice for all of us. So, um, uh, somehow like b- with the videos I'd watched that day and, um, I, all of this stuff like just made instant sense to me. Okay. Instantly. Peter had then come to bed that night. Okay. I hadn't told him that I had this moment and I had this, like, I'd, like I felt Jesus with me in that room. Like, I don't know how it, I knew it was, but I just knew that it was him there. Like this love that everything just overcame me. Peter's laying in bed and then I'm telling him a little bit about this stuff, but like not much because I wasn't ready to tell him about that moment yet. He decides to tell me, he's like, oh, you know what, baby? He's like, you should read this book called Killing Jesus, you know? And it's uh, it was a book about how, like, imagine if Jesus didn't exist during this time because the Bible is written by all these people. And he's telling me the story. I'm listening to him in one ear. In my other ear in my head, it was like, um, it was like the Lord telling me, or like, um, like Satan likes to masquerade himself as, sorry, I, how was it? I just realized in that moment that like all of the deception that was happening. So Satan, because he runs our world, he runs our world. His goal is to try to make you not believe that God exists or that Jesus exists and that hell exists you know he wants to take you all away from that and he wants us to become our own gods like at the beginning of genesis he's like as the snake he said oh yeah um why can't you eat from this tree you know and she's like oh um no we can't eat from it because um god said we'll die and he's like oh no no you actually won't die he's like you will become gods you'll get to know more of what it's like to be god if you if you um if you eat from the tree and she's like oh okay and because we wanted to know more we ate from it and so as one of the devil's biggest deceptions of us right now is to make us believe that we are God. But the number one commandment of the Ten Commandments, and even when Jesus came back, when he came into earth here, he said um, the number one commandment that you need to follow is that there are no other gods before me. So if you, so what the devil's doing, okay, and especially through like the satanic practices and the new age practices, is saying that you're always believing like, I put myself number one. I believe in myself. You know, I am amazing. I am extraordinary. You know, like I am number one. If you do that all the time, you're actually putting yourself ahead of God instead of God ahead of you. So these, so all of these things were just happening. And I was just, I just realized I'm like, wow, I'm like all the practices that I had been practicing for the last four or five years, like they were all a lie. You know, they were all a lie and not knowing, like in that moment, I knew that like Jesus, like he was the truth, the light and the way. And the only way to the father is through him. So the only way to get to heaven is through Jesus Christ and believing that Jesus Christ exists, believing that he died on the cross for our sins and that he resurrected and came back. And he's eventually going to come back on this planet one day. So that night, I just knew Peter went to sleep. I'm laying there. I had all of these, like, just these thoughts and these, like, these downloads coming in. And I really, I can't remember them all now, but I just knew in those moments, I was like, wow, I'm like, Jesus is real. I'm like, this, like, this is the answer, you know? And it was just so interesting because for me, I've been so, like, I've kind of been, like, open to all other religions. But when it came to Christians, (laughs) I, like, had this, uh, Christians, I was like, no, no, no. The next day, the next day, um, I actually received my Bible um, on Amazon because I ordered it the night before. And because of Amazon Prime, I received it in 24 hours. Um, I was just about to read the Bible. And um, what I decided to do is because I knew that um, that Jesus was like, I knew that Jesus is my Lord and Savior. And for me to be born again, I actually said the salvation prayer and I got down on my knees. And it wasn't perfect, the prayer. Okay, guys. But um, in that, I literally, I was on my knees in the corner, eyes closed, hands, hands like crossed together. And I was like, and I said to him, I was like, Jesus, I'm like, I believe you. I was like, I believe you existed. I believe you died on the cross for my sins. I accept your gift of salvation. And I believe that he rose from the dead to show that he conquered death and that I believe and follow him. And then I can be in eternity with him after I die. And in that moment, like I cried, I cried, 
And like, I felt like the Holy Spirit in that moment, like dwell within me. And there was this energy that was in this room. And I just, I just knew, I just knew. And that was it. That was it. Everything was just so, it was so simple and it just all made sense. And everything else that I had been doing, like just fell away in an instant. Okay. Um, So in that afternoon, I threw out everything. Um, I should have really burned it if I could, but I didn't have anywhere to burn my stuff. But I threw out anything related to new age that I had put, that I had like a spiritual connection with. So I got rid of my crystals, my tarot cards, uh, my journals, uh, my weed and my weed pipe. Um, I took down YouTube videos. Um, I cleaned up anything in my social media that had anything to do with new age um, theosophy. Got rid of my sage sticks. Um, took out stuff from my Amazon store recommendations, anything medical medium related. Um, I deleted books off of my phone that I was reading before about New Age. I had to let go of the concept of numerology and repeating numbers because I was like, so every time I'm like, oh, synchronicity, the universe is talking to me. And I also stopped believing in astrology as well. So I don't say, oh, I'm Leo anymore. It's like, no, 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 I'm, I'm Shameen. I'm a child of God kind of thing. So, who? Yeah, that's my testimony, guys. But I'm going to tell you just a few more things here before I go, because I think it's really important to know um, what has changed since then. So it's been now four weeks and a few days, um, almost well, five weeks now, five weeks since I got on my knees and I was saved by Jesus. Um, it was so beautiful. It was so beautiful. And I, he's, I feel like the Holy Spirit is with me every single day. That emptiness that I had felt on the inside of me in my heart and the constant searching and searching and searching for my purpose and what I should do. I thought I was always searching for a way to like find, put, associate with myself with doing a big project and making a lot of money. And then that's how I would be able to give back. And um, But still at the same time, I was always putting myself first all the time. That is so different now. Like my, I feel like my purpose, like I have found my purpose and my purpose is to be with God. What I'm going to do for work, I don't really know yet. I'm not worried about that. I am putting it all in God's hands. I'm surrendering to um, to God's will and what he wants in my life. Um, I'll tell you a few things that have significantly changed in my life so far. I no longer have body image issues, okay? I have no longer have body image issues. And I know you look at me and you see like, wow, like she looks really good. And yeah, my body does look really good. I'm really happy with it now. But when I was looking like this or even thinner, I still was never happy. I was constantly overthinking about what food I should eat, how much fasting I should do, um, the exercise, everything. And it would be on my mind all the time, all the time. And it's so, it's so, it's so disgusting to have to think about that stuff all the time. And it's also like, it's so heartbreaking because I know that there are so many women and so many men that experience this so far. And, um, so I have no more issues with that. And I think if I still did, you know, I would be praying to, um, to Jesus and praying to God and ask him to be like, please help me with this, you know, because I was like, I cannot live with these feelings inside of me and just feeling inadequate. But knowing that now that my life is like, this is my only life. So I have this chance to be able to hopefully redeem myself and continue to repent for my sins and to walk the way that Jesus walked and to hopefully be become a better Christian. That's what's most important to me. I still make sure that I take care of this body because the Holy Spirit dwells with inside of me. So, you know, it's important to take care of this body, but I no longer have those body image issues. My desire for attention has decreased so significantly. You know, when I think about posting something or doing something, I always ask myself, I'm like, is this going to glorify me or is it going to glorify God? If it's going to glorify me, I'm just like, no, like I won't do it. If it's going to glorify God, yeah, like I will do it. But my, the attention that I always would be searching for for so long is like, it's just not there. I I don't care. I don't care, you know, anymore. You know, I'm like, I'm not doing this for other people. I'm doing this for him and whatever is his will and what he wants, that is what I will do. My desire to follow Christ now and God is number one number, honestly, number one in my life. It's number one. I know that I will offend people as I go through my life. I know that I will lose people because I know I've already lost some friends already as this happened, you know, um, got into a really big fight with someone, but you know, at the end of the day, I was like, you know, I'm like, it's, it is what it is. Literally Jesus says it in the Bible that you will lose people as a result of me. So I put him, I put him first. I put him first. 
Um, I stopped smoking weed in an instant. That was like, I'm done. I'm never going to smoke weed again. Like I have no desire to. Um, I have no desire for drugs anymore either. And like also doing the psychedelics um, and the plant medicine as well. I'm done with that. Knowing that that stuff connects me to a spirit realm where there are demons. I do not want to have anything with to do with that. If you don't believe me, please go in my description section below. There is a playlist I put together of... Um, of new age deception and these videos I've watched and these are the ones I've curated that I really find that were really powerful for me. Maybe I'll make some videos about this stuff for you guys as well. But uh, but I have no desire to want to connect to a spirit world anymore. I stopped meditation, um, meditation from the sense of clearing my mind. My meditation now is I meditate on the word of um, of God and through the Bible as well. Um, I have stopped swearing. Uh, I do sometimes have some swear words slip out here and there, but I've gotten a lot better. And um, I do not use the Lord's name in vain. Sometimes I do and I say sorry for it. You know, I ask for forgiveness on it. But um and now I've also like have the desire actually to want to go out more with friends and people. And because before I felt like I just wanted to like be more alone. I felt that I needed to just be more quiet and I didn't want to do many things. But now I actually want to be around people and I do want to actually meet more Christian people. And I'm really grateful that I have joined a church here in Barcelona. So um, I have this it's been great. And uh, recently on this past weekend, I was baptized. I don't think I told you that at the beginning of this video, but I was baptized. It's on my Instagram, so you can go check out my Instagram for that video. It's just showing the baptism, but it was something that was really, really beautiful. So what I've done, though, is um, from the time that I found Jesus up until today, I listen to testimony videos almost every single day. Um, I watch content from Doreen Virtue and Stephen Bankars as well. They are freaking amazing. I read my Bible every single day. I pray two to three times a day. I said I joined the church and I was baptized. So um so, you know, don't take all of my word of what I'm saying. You know, I suggest that you go and do your research as well. Um, Doreen Virtue has, um, she has great content on her website. Uh, Stephen Bankars has a website called Reasons for Jesus. There is a website called gotquestions.org. If you have questions about like the Bible or just about Christianity in general. Um, there's, uh, well, I stopped doing yoga because yoga is also demonic in nature, which if you don't really know. So there's a really good website called truth behind yoga. I will leave these in the comment, in the description section below for you guys as well. And, um, yeah, I've had to definitely change all of my beliefs. And, um, there are so many things that are in the new age, um, the new age world that exists. Like I'll just paste for you guys on the screen here right now, of all the new age practices that exist. And it's kind of, it's crazy because you learn all these different things and you're just hoping that you get answers from each different one. So you have to learn all of these different things, um, to kind of make it all come together. And, um, now like my only word for now, my, my only for now, my only word and the only thing that I follow, guys, is the word that comes from the Holy Bible. And I read this every single day and I sit with it and I see how this applies to my life. And it's a book that I'll read for the rest of my life. And this is the only word. OK, this is the only word. It's the only real word. And, um, you know, even though it's has like it's, it's over 40 books, it's written by so many different authors. But throughout the book, it's all consistent. You know, it's all consistent about God. You know, it's really, really consistent in that way. But uh, anyways, I think that's it for now. I know this video has been an hour, but I hope that you, um, you know, can, you know, maybe opened your eyes a little bit more. And um, if this video could help even just one person, you know, and um, give you the opportunity to be able to be with him after you die in heaven. It was so my biggest thing for me really was when I learned about that hell does exist. And, um, you know, if I have the opportunity to go to heaven and to be with Jesus and to be with God, then why not? You know, why not learn this stuff? Why not follow it? Like I, it's no skin off of my back, you know, to follow God like this is now. And but I know that this is the way like I feel it truly, truly deeply like he is with me all the time. Um, the issues that I used to face in my life and the problems and the worries and all these things I have, like, I don't have them anymore. Like I speak to him every single day. And, you know, at times, sometimes like I, you know, I was really upset that I had gone through all of these things in my life. But I think if I didn't go through it, you know, how would I ever be really like convicted to what I'm doing now 
in my life, you know? Um, so that's it. I hope that you enjoyed this video and um, I love you so much. Thank you for being here with me. Thank you for supporting me along this way. And um, I know that I have many Christian followers as well because I've heard from you and um, and I just want to thank everyone that prayed for me, everyone that prayed for me during this time because I never knew that I needed this. And if I had continued going down that um, that path, I may not have, uh, you know, I, yeah, my life would definitely turn out very, very different. Um, oh, I just want to say one more thing, guys. I know it's been long, but one more thing I want to say to you is the reason why the whole thing with hell really, really got to me is because I actually was watching a lot of um, near-death experience videos from people that had died, pretty much died, you know, and come back. But when they had died, there were people that either went to heaven or hell. And I listened to the experiences of people who went to hell and it is disgusting. It is scary. And to know that these people knew when they went there that it was an eternity. It was an eternity in hell. We don't understand the concept of eternity because we don't know what eternity is. But eternity means never ending forever and ever and ever being tortured for eternity. And it's... It's being tortured and it's because you'd, um, you'd separate your, separated yourself from God and it is sep full separation from God. And on this planet, the devil is trying to keep us separated from him so that we not know him and make us seem that we're our only answers and we're the only way, but we're not. We're really not. And knowing that, you know, like truly, truly changes things, you know? So again, don't go on what I'm just saying you know, watch videos, do the research, go search for the truth, put your ego, put your pride aside. I had to do that. I had to put that stuff aside because, you know, think I was like, I always thought I'm like, oh, people who are Christian and follow Jesus, you know, like they, they don't know how to think for themselves. It's just, they want people to tell them what to do. But when you get into it and when you get to know Jesus and when you know truly truly the spiritual warfare that like that is the end game guys is the end game like there, it's spiritual warfare happening and it's a spiritual warfare for um between god and the devil and the devil is trying to take away so many of us from god so that we cannot be with him and try to take us so they can torture us forever but you may not think that because on this planet what he's trying to do is to make you think that it's all great and he's good. You know, like I've even read stuff in one of the books that they talk about, like how Lucifer, like Lucifer was the balance and he was good and Satan was kind of good, too. And like that kind of rubbed me a little bit of the wrong way. But you, you know, start doing the research, start doing the research, read things, watch videos, you know, and if you are another religion, you know, and you're not Christian and this offends you. Go and do the research. I've watched some videos of people who've converted from Judaism to Christian, um, from atheist to Christian. But this one guy, Nabil, um, I forget his last name, but he actually died and I was really sad about it. But this guy, Nabil, um, he uh, wrote a book and there's also a really great testimony of seeking Allah and finding Jesus. Oh my goodness. It was so beautiful. It's so amazing. Go and watch people's testimonies videos. These testimony videos are the things that really help remind me to keep my strength and my faith in Jesus and, um, you know, staying close to my Bible, surrounding myself with um, fellow Christians and going to church and, um, you know, just, but just knowing that like God is the way, is the way, Jesus is the way. So um, that's it. <laughs> That's all I got, guys. I hope that you enjoyed this. I love you so much. Thank you for watching. And um, 